Hello again, I'm Lucas, as I hope you know. I'm the TOEFL guy here at Magoosh, and today is Tuesday, so we're going to talk about the TOEFL. It's TOEFL Tuesday. All right, now, today we're going to continue something I've talked about before, TOEFL grammar, and specifically the subject and the verb of a sentence, and where they are, how you identify them, their importance, I have a little two here because this is the second video on the subject and verb. Just to remind you a little bit about how subject and verbs work, I have a sentence here from my last video. Lower mountains tend to be older and are often eroded relics of much higher mountains. This is from a real TOEFL reading. It is a difficult sentence, and it has, you might notice, one subject, but it actually has two verbs, tend to be and are. And I like to extend that are to a little bit longer to use the whole phrase. Remember that whole phrases can be verbs and whole phrases can be subjects. It helps to understand the full meaning if you don't limit yourself to one small word for the subject and one small word for the verb. Sometimes it's impossible. Sometimes you have to have at least two verbs, like here, because of the word and. Okay, now let's take a look at a different type of sentence. This is challenging. It is difficult for many students. Sometimes you have a sentence that has a lot of information like this one. Whatever the reason for mountain formation, as soon as land rises above sea level, it is subjected to destructive forces. Okay, where is the subject and where is the verb? Think about this for a minute. How many subjects are there? How many verbs are there? What's the relationship? There are here a couple of subjects. There is a land and there is oh, it. And similarly, there are two verbs. For every subject, there must be at least one verb. So because there are two subjects here, there is, rises is a verb, and is subjected is another verb. So we have that land rises, and it is subjected. This has very little meaning. I'm going to extend it. Subjected to destructive forces. But there's actually only one main clause here, one main subject and verb pair. And we know which one it is because of a clue word, in this case, a clue phrase, as soon as. As soon as is like when or if or because. It makes this clause with land rises dependent. On the other hand, this one is independent. And generally, the independent clause is the important clause. It is the more important one. Now, this brings us to another problem. Because our important clause with it is has a really unimportant subject, it. It means nothing. It is just filler. What does it refer to? What is it? That is what is important. So it refers back to land. Land rises and land is subjected. So this dependent clause that comes earlier can be important in how it relates to the independent clause. And 
again, the main verb here is is subjected to destructive forces, but we really need the context of this time when the land rises if we want to understand the full meaning of the later verb. It is subjected to those destructive forces like rain or wind or other destructive forces like people because it has risen above the sea. And then at that time, this destruction can happen. But the main idea is that land is destroyed. And we need to know that it refers to land in order to understand this main idea down here. One more point. You may have noticed that at the top here, I didn't touch anything. There's no subject there. There's no verb there. That is an introductory phrase that introduces the sentence, but it is an adverb phrase. It does not have a subject or verb because it acts as an adverb here. And we just see the reason for mountain formation is one big noun, but it is not a subject. The subject is land because of the word it later. Complicated sentences can be hard to find the subject and verb in. Sometimes it's very late in the sentence. You need to first look at the relationships between the big pieces of the sentence. See this introduction that is just an adverb that explains extra information about the main idea later, and then see clues like as soon as, which give you a clue that this is about the time, and it is um, dependent clause, and that finally brings you to the independent clause, which has the most important information. Difficult sentence, but hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now. Thank you for watching this week. I hope to see you again next week at TOEFL Tuesdays. Again, I'm Lucas. Happy studying.